Let's send it over to Wes and Johnny on the caster's desk. Thank you, Darren. We are way into the draft hey. here. We gotta, we gotta go. Uh, we gotta speed run this cast of this draft right now. Cassiopeia, yeah. Skarner, Nar on JV one side. Cled, <laughs> Twitch, Olaf on Oasis Esports. Swain, Tristana, <laughs> Pantheon picked by JV one. Sire, Rickon picked by Oasis. Hi, Johnny. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, everybody. We are here. We're caught up with the draft now, and uh, there we go. Uh, do you even yep. need a play by play? You're just gonna, just gonna, you could just wrap <laughs> oh, it off. I, I, I've, I'm spent now. I've done all of the rap god uh, <laughs> yeah, casting I could do. I was gonna say, you got, a, you got a little rap god in you, and I appreciate that. <laughs> all right, everybody, welcome, and let's get into this draft. Yeah, Zyra Khan, key pickup for Oasis Esports right there. Just obviously that very potent combo, but on the other side, um, they got some, some scary pick composition kind of starting to build up there with Pantheon and Swain there, followed up with Tristana. Yeah, so I really like Desire Rakan here, as he's, as uh, we mentioned before, that um, that duo so strong, not to be trifled with, um, and we do ha still have the Tom Kench available, so something definitely available to go with that Tristana. That's uh, that's kind of what I'd like to see here. But uh, as we remember from last week when Oasis played against League of Dogs, definitely. A strong Riven play by Nappy, but Gangplank also was a dominant pick, even though League of Dogs mm -hmm. ended up winning that game, kind of being hard carried by Gappies in the bot lane. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you remember that was what our first uh, flame horizon of the of the yeah. Premier League was Gangplank versus Pike Top. And of course, that's a very favorable matchup, but uh, we will see what is coming out uh, for JV1 for the answer to that uh, Nappy uh, late game scaling pick there on Gangplank. Also, uh, while we're waiting for these bands too, uh uh, we apparently missed a ban, or we'll see if that was actually missed, or if that is yeah. supposed to be something in a visual bug. But anyway, um, uh, I appreciate that there's a team in this league named after me, hmm. my real name being Jonathan Villaverde. So JV One is JV1. easily my favorite team because it's my. <laughs> They sponsored me, apparently. Or I sponsored on, them. So, How does that work? <laughs> so, so you must have come before this team. So shouldn't they be JV2? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, uh, we, we're happy with uh, we're happy with the reference with the initials anyway. So uh, Talia um, Ban now coming in here for yeah, Oasis. Definitely again, wanting we, to take that away we... from Roman. Either have that. a no ban or a, a situation where it was incorrect. Yeah, so it was. Um, JV1 actually banned Gragas, and Elise was banned by Oasis. So that, okay. again, just a, a bit of a visual bug, I suppose. But yep, yeah, jungle bans coming through. Out. There you go. And then Twisted Fate is going to be denied there for the other mm -hmm. side. Yeah, you saw the Skarner ban earlier. I, mm -hmm. I kind of ripped through that one, but that obviously is directly targeted at roman a skarner mm -hmm. one trick and we saw last week with uh with oasis being very strong and roman really yeah, coming alive in that ghost. second game you don't want uh, to take on, that away from it which was pretty cool yeah um yeah ghost on skarner was actually pretty terrifying but we won't see that today we will see him on j4 which in a sense plays a similar role um you alt onto someone uh while you're not dragging them back you're potentially just holding them so the rest of the team can then jump on it too as well so mm -hmm. we'll see if he's able to be able to do that meanwhile jack's being picked on the other side again they're looking for this huge pick composition this burst amount of damage the jv1 wants to be able to win that way yeah also uh sort of focused around scaling so far oh the senna so Senna. it's going to be senna support coming in there that's mm -hmm. shoddy on that and poison bow on the tristana um yeah so we have the jacks coming in which is a nice scaling pick and you have essentially sort of three questionable flex picks here mm -hmm. uh pantheon Jax, swain all can go either mid or top and p both pantheon and Jax can jungle i'm expecting pantheon jungle here mm -hmm. uh, and Jax in the top lane to well, answer that gangplank i actually uh, want to throw a curveball here what if it's tristana sure. mid and then you're looking at Jax or pantheon okay or swain. oh actually, man swain senna is disgusting i got I so many curveballs yesterday in the amateur <laughs> league i'm not sure i'm ready for any more man but yeah um, we, do, we do have so... like tristana mid absolutely viable by the mm -hmm, way that's for sure like hardly even could be considered a, a, an outside you know troll pick of any mm -hmm. kind so uh finishing off here with the oriana is oasis esports and uh very clear goal here recon with oriana so strong jarvin so strong into mm -hmm. that as well that's a huge amount of engagement and a huge amount of disengage if they need it so oasis yeah. esports coming together with a really serious team fight composition while jv1 more looking for picks and scaling yeah, definitely OAC Sports here put together again the uh, generically good team composition. And by yeah. that I mean they're just going to be very good at team fighting and they scale well into the late game as well. Um, while not not while not while just completely sacrificing the early game. Like Zion Rakan can make some plays early on and Jarvin's such a good early game jungler mm -hmm. that it's that it 
definitely has um, the phases of everything you kind of see. Like it, like their coach right now, well, it, putting together the draft or or just high fiving their players for, you know, just putting together what is what is good. But on the other side, you just kind of have scary stuff, right? Like yeah. that can sometimes break apart. Like your good draft is when uh, you don't have the right vision, and then you're able to pick them apart. Like, but we were saying like the one of the strengths of Oasis Esports last week was their vision game and being able to Absolutely. get everything well there. Yeah, definitely looking to see different plans from both of these teams. Now, we are going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, we are going to let the teams get into the client and take our competitive integrity pause and delay. And then we will be back in just a moment for game one. Okay, and we are live with game one of JV1 versus Oasis Esports. All right. So, um, oh, look what I, Swain Senna bought. Like there I said, we go. I'm a genius. He said it. He said it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Score one for Johnny on the on this one. So it's okay, Swain okay, okay. and Senna bot lane yeah. up, up against the uh, the Zyrocon there, and then we got uh, Killer Penguins, as you said, Tristana mid lane and Jack One P in the jungle on on Pantheon. So really spicy. Killer Penguins definitely. This is a good pick into Oriana. Any kind of auto attacker, long range auto attacker, I mm. like into Oriana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I kind of love it. I kind of love what's going like, going on here too. Over on the Oasis Esports side, we have Nappy in the top lane, Roman playing the jungle on the Jarvan, Tethalis over there in the mid lane, taking over for Tatsuya, and Double B in the King's Land are your bot lane for Oasis. Yes, so, that's right. Yeah. And JV1, just real quick, run this down. Uh, Pyro God in the top lane, Jack One P in the jungle, Killer Penguins in the mid, Poison Bow in the bot lane, Shoddy as support. Yeah. All right. All right. We're into it. Okay. So last time, every time I tried to talk about some Senna science, um, <laughs> fights happen. So bring it gonna, on, Johnny. We're gonna no try to, right now. <laughs> we're gonna try to talk about it because I did a lot of Senna science and a lot of it was Senna Swain because it's actually so fun. Now the difficulty of this is that Swain makes it super hard oh, as they uh, are aggressively in the other bush. They're both aggressively in each other's bushes. It's amazing. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, the, the the hard part of this is, in general, I think Swain is a support that should probably be played more. It, it it really makes it hard to CS when you're shorter range AD carry, much like Zaya is. And um, it just kind of get pulled into things pretty easily, like you're about to see right now. Boom. Like, that combo is going to happen a bunch of times. And for the most part, yeah, they're going to take some damage over here, but Senna should be able to heal that right back up. So um, it is a good response by the uh, Zaya Rakan to have uh, done something back there, but... Uh, Assuming things go to plan, Poison Bow should heal them both up shortly here. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting lane to watch. Uh, oh, yeah, they oh. don't want to get engaged on oh. that early. What a great play by King's Line. He's going to be able to get that one down. Shoddy now is going to be able to flash away. So that is the window of opportunity to take on Senna and Swain is when they don't respect your engage possibility Oof. from the Recon and uh, just right there, first blood, easy. Yeah, definitely seeing the power of Zyra Khan there and not respected. Yeah, that that's exactly what we talked about. So Swain, Senna, I definitely have played against that. I definitely can see the power of it, but not mm -hmm. at level one. <laughs> at yeah, level yeah, one, yeah, you yeah. take Zyra Khan every single day. Yeah. And so definitely a bit of an overextension from Poison Bow and Shoddy, but a beautiful mm -hmm. capitalization there. Double B and Kingsland going in on that. We do have the pause coming in, so uh, maybe a little bit more time to discuss these team compositions. Yeah. Uh, I like the jungle matchup here because we got Roman versus Jack 1P uh, and that's Pantheon versus Jarvan. And so both super strong early game junglers, mm -hmm. both able to make a huge amount of impact in the very, very early game. As soon as they reach level two or three, they can start ganking and start making differences in these lanes. So uh, I really like to see that. And I, I'd really interested in where they're going to go. Uh, you do want to get these scaling top laners going. So Nappy versus Pyro God could definitely be a way to uh, capitalize on these early game junglers. In mm -hmm. particular, that's what Kang was talking about early on when uh, they talked about Tate Alice coming in as maybe a more self-sufficient mid laner uh, than, than Tatsuya. And so in that way, uh, he will be able to roam at, with Roman and be able to play this play this game through Nappy more so, who looks like sort of the star player currently mm -hmm. uh, on their team. Yeah, exactly. Like just like that scaling, what they're gonna be able to do with Nappy there. We've seen him kind of pop off on like those ribbons, and even though we we memed a bit about uh, him trying to jump over a wall, but it, it's it, it's it's one of the funniest things when you have a game uh, that's being casted or whatever. It's like you could do a million amazing plays, but if you catch yeah. on stream the one time you screw oh, something like yeah. that up. And it was a game they ended up winning, I believe, right? They did. Like, they so, won that game. Indeed. Yeah, yep. so like it, like it didn't even matter that <laughs> happened, but. No. 
you'll forever be remembered for it. Yeah. Sorry, Nappy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nappy played his heart out in that game. I, I I totally see him as the star player of that game, regardless of that one, uh, you know, missed micro. But as you say, everyone's going to focus on that. It's a story that is mm -hmm. much older than League of Legends. And uh, <laughs> we don't need to get too far into that. Looks like the teams I saw in chat looks like they may be uh, readying up here, but um, still paused for now. I think we did have a disconnect from Double B there. So... Um, meanwhile, in the mid lane, I'm expecting a huge CS lead coming in from Killer Penguins if uh, this is this comes in even because it is so hard to deal with any sort of AD carry, strong AD carry like that uh, mm -hmm. as an Orianna. Um, you really need ganks uh, in this Orianna lane. You're you're not going to be able to out push this Tristana. You already see a double stacked minion wave coming in here, mm -hmm. and you're not going to be able to out damage her unless you get the perfect combo. Yeah, that's one of the things. Like, so, like, Orianna tends to outpush a lot of other mid laners, but then, like, Tristana comes in there and actually makes yeah. that. So, Flash coming from Jack 1P is going to be able to get the stun off, but I don't think there's going to be enough follow up. So, nice mm -hmm. job, Sethalis, just positioning himself correctly for the gank. Like, there's no vision there, I do not believe. Actually, might have saw him through the Raptors. I don't 100% know that objectively. There was a ward near there, so maybe he was just well prepared for that. So, yeah, just good job by Tethalis. Yeah, good job. They definitely take that, though, uh, with Jack 1P going in with the Flash. Uh, they trade for the mid laner Flash, uh, as we always mm -hmm. say. Just looking for a repeat gank there to make use of what Jack 1P has accomplished there. For so. sure, that definitely seems mostly worth for Jack 1P. Yep. Um, there you go. They're positioning over here on bottom side of the big minion wave over there for the Swain to pick up as much CS as possible. Um, might as well Pyro God and Nappy are jumping up on top of each other. But yeah, what, what's kind of nice too, like the Swain support, uh, one of its kind of biggest problems is that it falls off super freaking hard because you don't have any gold on it. What's nice about doing the Fasting Senna with it is like, yeah, you actually get the gold and you can become a regular Swain as you come into late game. And Swain scaling is is, is borderline absurd. So exactly, um, it yeah, it has a lot of things that are really going for it. Of course, you know, giving up that first blood probably didn't help. But here comes a gank over towards the top lane. Jack 1T is now on top of Nappy here, trying to get out of the situation, maybe at least trade a kill with Pyro God does not. We'll try to flash away and go in towards the middle of the push here. Jack 1P will continue on to the gauge and then jump right back onto him is the Pyro God and he will get that kill. Well played. Nappy did everything he could there, but uh, they played it really well. Uh, we do see another pause coming in. Sorry about that, folks. Just a couple of technical difficulties on the player side there. You do see a big CS lead already coming in for the Gangplank mm -hmm. uh, against the Jacks and definitely very required for Jack 1P to show up in that lane. Otherwise, mm -hmm. Nappy, we've seen how strong he is in lane on Gangplank, how oppressive he could be. And if Jack 1P hadn't shown up, the Pyro God was looking to get solo killed in that lane. So Yeah, uh, and like, you see the CS lead, like, he was just going to be continued out farming them. And it was just, yeah. like, good play by Jack 1P to be right up there, right, right, yeah. right, right ready for it. Yeah, he's been in the same spot. Oops, uh, looks like we are coming. We're resuming the game back up again. So just a quick pause there. Make sure we all have our ducks in a row. I just do want to quickly mention that Tethalus did take Cleanse here, and this is a bit of a bait. So Cleanse, not mm. very useful at all against Tristana. In oh, fact, yeah. it doesn't do anything. There's nothing you can cleanse. <laughs> and so this is clearly... Oh, oh nice. Here. It wants to be King's Land. A King's Land! Last time we saw these teams play, King's Land put in so much work, and there you go. That's happening again. Uh, yeah, and they're just taking advantage of, of, of level advantages there, I believe. Um, uh, just had them let Zaya hitting level 4 there and just being kind of ahead, and Shadi now hitting level 4 after the fight. It just doesn't really help. So they're, they're, they're doing a really good job of kind of just like their, 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 their mini power spikes in bot lane that you kind of get uh, to yeah. level. Summoner spell discrepancy also taken advantage of there. Still mm -hmm. Double B and Kingsland have their flashes available and still no flashes, no summoners at all available for the bot lane of JV1. So really nice play there by both of them. Oh, here's a nice stun coming up as well. Just to finish off that point of the cleanse, they expected this Wayne mid, almost certainly. Yeah. And so uh, that is exactly why he's got cleanse there. In this case, he can use it to avoid a Pantheon gank to a certain extent, but it's useless oh. against the Tristana. Oh, nice damage there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's still going to be very relevant in later team fights, but yeah, you're just not getting that kind of lane value uh, that you were expecting to get. So, um, yeah, a little bit of a, uh, an advantage for the flex pick that they're making. And, yep. and as we see more and more commonly in organized play, that flex picks become more and more of an, uh, an important thing if your team's mm -hmm. able to pull it off. So. We like it. I like it for sure. I love uh, flex picks. I love yeah, the yeah. idea that you can play champions in multiple lanes and you go multiple builds. It's one of my favorite things about this current meta is that there's so much of that available. I think it's yeah. good for the game. It, it, it's funny because a long time, like as a 
basically an AD carry player. Like when it, mm -hmm. at first you were getting like the the Ziggs bot and like dumb things going bot and things moving around. I first hated it because I was like, mm -hmm. I just want to play my AD yeah. carries <laughs> because I'm a freaking boomer and I want to play in season three or whatever it was. <laughs> so, uh, but but as I kind of like uh, uh, maybe it's Stockholm syndrome, but as uh, eventually I, I started to enjoy these weird flex picks and like and, and especially when you're watching the game, it is nice to be like, oh, this is for sure a top lane. This, like like it's nice that these people aren't in these boxes. And yep. uh, it's nice to see, like at, at almost all level of play, um, that it's still affecting uh, everything. It's, like it's really, really smart, and I think it's yes. I think it's a cool adaptation that like players everywhere of all levels are kind of like adapting and, and enjoying more. And 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 yeah. when I do stuff like Zyra bot, I'm not automatically assumed I'm trolling. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No. I, exactly. I really like that. Uh, the, the effect it's had on solo queue. Honestly, it's mm -hmm. definitely it's changing every level of play, like you say, in uh, for the better, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. see Jack One P here uh doing a nice job of counter jungling here against the jarvan pantheon with a nice very self-sustaining presence in the jungle not needing a lot of help there uh and he was sort of considering a gank towards the top lane on to nappy but at this point pyro god is so low in health that it's just it, it looks like nappy could 1v2 at this point so mm -hmm. uh, roman will answer that with a dragon of course so that's a nice job by him to oh. get that and here comes jack one pete here comes jack one pete to that top lane onto nappy right now does not have flash available but can just walk away um the one thing to note that wasn't taking advantage of uh the oriana's flashes back up so the early gank yep. to get the flash off of oriana wasn't taking advantage of to get it back again and right now oriana is actually basically even in cs now with tristana as that like pushing potential is starting to yes. even out um as like tristana had a big advantage early and it's now starting to kind of like go back in favor of oriana like yeah i gotta take really well. that's yeah. the strength of nappy having to draw all that pressure to this top mm -hmm. lane because you expect you don't expect this much dominance from a gangplank versus Jack's lane it's not exactly it's more or less a skill matchup but mm -hmm. nappy just totally dominating it doesn't look that crazy right now because he's gotten the death but he is able to push Jack's off of waves almost anytime he wants mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile in the bot lane another big engage. fight coming in king slam's gonna jump in under the tower but he's not gonna care we'll just walk out of that after doing a little bit of a trade um, and the big thing note here is that um, not sure 100% uh, on how comfortable Shoddy is CSing on this champion here, mm -hmm. but it's like that's a big difference right now. Of course, you have the two kills, but uh, if you can't at least be within 10 CS is kind of like the goal coming out of laning phase. If you can't like kind of stick around in CS there. It makes the pick less worth it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're the lane clearly falling behind kind of just on their own as Pyro God does try to chop on top of Nappy, but oh! come through. it might be a trade kill. No, the flash will come out, and Pyro God will flash his mastery there. He picks up the 1v1 on the Nappy, and there we go. His two kills are just equaling that CS out. Definitely the Sheen coming in, and he had an item discrepancy. I was about to say, you know, my damage, my gangplank cues don't do this much damage with a <laughs> blue gem and a longsword, but not enough damage to return back there as the Jax had completed that Sheen. Oh. That was definitely what happened there. Here comes the engage on the swing. Yeah, Khan hit level six, so he's gonna be in there with the ultimate there. You are getting the ult from the center to basically try to get rid of that as well as Swain ulting to survive that engage. So right now this bot lane is surviving. Um you do scale better. Uh not that Zyra Khan scales poorly, but like you do scale fairly well, so you're kind of yep. like okay with surviving, but it's just those two kills that kind of made this all really unfortunate. And and like I already mentioned that CS discrepancy is it's almost like three kills at this point. Um, so yeah. uh, that's that's the thing you're scared of for sure right now, because that's basically the 1.5k gold difference in this game is right there. Yeah, it, it's possible the scaling is, is similar in a vacuum, but the fact that Zaya has this Jarvan Oriana gangplank <laughs> combo to uh, to go with as long as as well as, of course, the engage from the Rakan. Uh, Zaya being fed, it does so much AOE damage to a <laughs> team when you get a 5v5 team fight that I just, it, you really don't want to have this Zaya getting too much further ahead. It is already a big CS discrepancy as well as that uh, those two kills there. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, you're really scared of this Zaya at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. Such power in the mid game. Here's Ooh. the Pantheon gank though. Pantheon coming back top with the alt. Nappy now does have his flash. He will use it to survive this one. And yeah, just a lot of tension, like you mentioned, being paid toward this top lane, knowing how strong Nappy is. But again, two kills onto the Pyro God on the top side here yes. is gigantic as he equals that one out here. We do see three members on the bot side here for Oasis Esports, but it looks like they're just going to back up. You know, no, never mind. Jarvan is still sticking around to see if Shoddy does overstep. He's going to go for it. Does get the Cataclysm down onto him. Double B has arrived here as well and will actually pick up the kill on that one. So way to go. 
for Oasis Esports, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah, Double B able to pick up that kill as well. Here's another oh, engage on Snappy. He's going to go down. Oh, it's like that. That's right. I love I love watching Tristana play sometimes. You know, yeah, yeah it's a crazy one, so it really it wasn't just Tristana, but still, it's like, <laughs> jump in it, because you never know what's going to happen sometimes. Oh, but man. like that one, it was pretty clear that they were just going to be able to pick up that kill. So they finally get one, but they are also losing the bot lane, which gives them a lot of dragon control for yep. the Oasis Esports. So that's tough. Yeah, Rift Herald was taken there by Jack 1P before that gank came in, and so they were they managed to get the first turret as well. Only gonna be Oh! <laughs> King's Lad! Did he use the heal? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> double B tried to heal. Uh I mean no. it was it was, yeah. Just an execute, but uh yeah. it's the real really important thing is like losing your heal for trying to save someone who was just getting executed, yeah. uh just backing the most efficient way. Um Yep, but, exactly. Uh, they do uh, yeah. manage to get the tower and all five plates there. Yeah. So uh, nice job. Uh, they get a, a bunch of gold there, but first turret still does go over to JV1. However, Oasis Esports still with a gold lead, almost 3,000, or almost 2,000, I should say, uh, just because of those lane CS leads and those three kills on that mm -hmm. side. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really doing a great job of kind of keeping this right here. And like the solo lanes right now are just winning uh, on the other parts of the map here. Um, Oriani is keeping it close though. It does have the CS yep. lead, but the one kill that that killer penguins was able to do at the top lane does kind of help keep that even, basically. So, it's uh, it, it'll be really interesting to see kind of when, once we get to the, like this mid game, like the pick potential again of JV one here is huge. So we're gonna see how well Oasis Esports handles that. The, a team that themselves played such a good uh, pick game last week. We'll see if they're going to be able to pull that off. They know how to kind of counter it. But they do have this dragon control right now, which is fantastic. So they're looking at this Ocean Drake and then pick up uh, uh, getting closer to Soul Point. Yeah, Jack 1P is here, uh, but he's actually just walking away. So they're going to give this one. And so, yeah, nice job. Two dragons here. We'll see which, uh, yeah. which no Rift smite on arrives. Yeah, no Smite having to be used there as uh, the Mountain Soul is on the map. Definitely going to be strong against people like that Tristana and Senna. So uh, definitely Oasis Esports interested in grabbing that one for themselves. I like that we got to see our two players to watch, Jack 1P and Nappy, go head to head. Mm. Uh, where where Jack 1P is just trying to stop Nappy from really snowballing the way they mm -hmm. saw him do against League of Dogs, who is a, yeah. an undefeated team currently. They are a very, very strong team. So the fact that Oasis can take it, could take it to them last week, uh, I think is nothing to be ignored here. And uh, yeah, you do see two dragons already going down to Oasis, see them with the gold lead, see them with uh, even turrets and with a, in my opinion, slightly better scaling comp in general, though it, that, that's mm. debatable, but uh, I, I like the Pantheon better, or I like the Jarvan better than the Pantheon in late game team fights. So uh, yeah. Oasis Esports in a good spot here. I think. Yeah, exactly. They're gonna kind of set up for those late game team fights, like you said. And again, uh, what, one thing that maybe you don't necessarily predict is, is how well this bot lane has been doing. Uh, not that they, not that I recall them doing bad last week either, but yep. uh, it was definitely not what they carried through. It was yep, either it was, Nappy yep. pulling it off or, or Tatsuya last week in the mid lane had, exactly. had some good games. It was kind of like the um, the bot lane playing uh, uh, more supportive roles essentially. But right now they're 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 set up to carry in these team mm -hmm. fights, which is really nice for them. You always have to decide: Are we giving away Zaya Rakan? Because hmm. it's the percentage. I don't know what it is offhand, but in these kind of you know mid-level competitive games, it's just the percentage must be so high. Zaya Rakan, first of all, so strong, and second of all, not too difficult to operate. Uh, if you've mm -hmm. got both of them, it's just you go in, you do all the damage, you kill them. Like well, it's, yeah, uh, and it's one of those interesting things because you you, don't, you look at like Zaya's solo queue win rate, and you're like, oh man, but that's yeah. because that's that's Zaya just on their own doing yep. whatever. You're not so necessarily few people play Rakan. Right? Yeah, you're not. Yeah, you're not. You're not seeing a lot of the duo Zaya Rakan with people kind of playing that, but it's it's, it's so potent when you have to see it in this organized play. The fight is supposed to break loose here. Jarvis is going to jump in with his ult to try to get him onto the top of them. The rest of them now. The Senna ult does put the big shield to make him back off for a bit. Shoddy is ultimated here, so he's a little bit tanky, but he's not going to have to flash over. Eventually, we'll go down to Roma, but here comes Roman himself. Pyro God is now jumping fight as well, and so is the Tristana. It jumps on top of Roman. He's going to be able to pick up that kill, and it goes on towards Typhalus. He's going to be able to jump over there. Double B will pick up another kill here. Two for two. This fight is insane, and it just ends up being an even fight, and I kept thinking, okay, this team has an advantage now, this team yep. has an advantage now, yep. and it just ended up being kind of even, but you do see Oasis Sports pick up tower. Yeah, back and forth there. You saw Jack 1P coming in with the ultimate and then a really nice E to prevent all that damage toward him. Survived quite a long time and really was able to equalize that fight for JV1 there. Or Nappy, I, I meant Jack 1P when I was talking about that. That's the Pantheon. 
uh, mm -hmm. coming in there and preventing all that damage that was focused toward him. So really nice play there. Also, Tethalus, uh, notably, didn't have Shockwave available for that fight, and so wasn't able to get that huge... Uh, they weren't able to get the full combo there, uh, as the Jarvan and Rakan were able to engage, but not Tethalus with the Orianna able to follow up. So once mm -hmm. all those abilities are off cooldown and they get that engagement, they de that definitely goes to Oasis. But since it wasn't available, uh, it came out even. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the big thing to note now, Double B has got a 4-0-1 score. And yes. we're talking about how scary this guy is. Real, real scary. The other scary part is, if you're this pick composition and you pick Zaya, like often you're like, oh yeah, we want to pick the AD carry. It might not even be that great if you don't mm -hmm. fully stun lock her, because just if you don't fully stun lock her, she just ultimates out of there, is able to stun you all up, and then the rest of the team's gonna be able to come back into that fight uh, if, if that all goes down. So it's really scary when this Zaya is this strong, but we'll see how they handle it through the rest of this game as uh, yeah. Wixie Sports is now working on their Yeah, and I. Uh... Now that I'm looking at the builds a little closer, you do see all the ninja tabby coming through, and it it brings up a little bit of a point about damage profile, which you might be worried about. I'll stop that as this engage happens here. They oh, do take it. They are able to steal it, and now fight breaks through. Big Zai ultimate will pick up a ton of kill there. Okay, Thalus does get that one at the J1P. Does pick up double kill. Now it's a triple oh. kill. Just keep it going, but Zaya is still trying to fight through here and through all of this shot. He's going to go down. Quadra kill comes through for Tay Thalus, and Poison Bow's just going to run away. And that's what happens when the Oriana ultimate is available. Tethalus in the debut in the Premier League with the Quadra kill on the Rift Herald fight. Nice steal coming in from Jack1P, but this is the power of this team composition. Mm -hmm. If they all have their cooldowns available, all their ultimates available, it is such a massacre in that team fight. So really nicely baited there by Oasis Esports. Definitely worth taking losing that Rift Herald there. Yeah, just kind of a wild fight that's just like you're you're seeing definitely the kind of the proof there, the AoE damage you were talking about with the, with all those Zaya feathers coming through and then Oriana finishing it all off with that big ultimate. It's just yep. like, yeah, that's like you can't fight like, as much as you're the pick composition, you can't fight in kind of those five v five corridors. Uh and just a good job of that happening here. Meanwhile, Nappy is picking a fight here with Jack One P as the red team is going to secure this dragon. They're gonna go down. Double P goes unstoppable as this fight can use further. He does get a sound on a couple field off. Pyro God's gonna jump over the wall to try to get out of here as he's not able to get the steal on Roman though. Is he gonna be able to get it on top of him? Sun up a bit. Is he gonna out? He does kind of just jump oh, out of no. here. But there comes Nappy to pick up that one. Two for zero and the dragon for Oasis Esports. Woo. What's that sound? Clappy has entered the building right now. What yeah, a play there by Nappy, zoning out the jungler, getting him down so low in HP as the Pantheon had to totally get out of there, giving away the dragon, and wasn't able to, even able to get away as mm -hmm. the flash still up from Nappy. Really nice play there to be able to take down that dragon. And yeah, JV1 thinking maybe they would be able to steal that away. It's so scary to be on soul point at a time like this in the game. Mm -hmm. And so you really want to go for that desperation play, but they are totally punished for it by Oasis Esports there. Yeah, and it's scary when, like, you know, like, while I, I said earlier about, like, the scaling of the Swain, Senna bottling does exist, it... it and holistically, the other team has a better late game team composition. So when they're ahead this much at this part of the game, they're the ones up for a soul point. It is pretty scary situation for them um, because uh, right now you have so many item dependent players and they're just behind on items. Uh, and yeah, it's, just, it's scary. Yeah, you know, you really were looking to the Pyro God to try to leverage his early game lead that he managed to get in Ooh, here the lane as I pause for the gank yeah, here. He's trying to get on top of the Nappy. He does so oh, much damage, oh. though, it's not going to really matter because Killer Penguin is going to pick up that kill. So Nappy uh, trying to survive there in a 1v3 will not make that happen. So there's the pick we were talking about. This is what this yep. team can put together. You get the Jack 1P ultimate there with the Pantheon, and then you get that pick. You have this bot lane pushing over here. Uh, unfortunately, the Rift Herald is not on that champion. It is on Jack 1P himself, so uh, this will take a little while, but he will get that eventually. Um, and yeah, that, that's your avenue back in this game, are plays yes. like that. Yep, the Pantheon able to come in, able to make a difference, and that is the strength of the Pantheon. That's why the Pantheon can be picked and can be used to scale into the late game, even with his damage falling off, is that mm -hmm. he's able to have that global ultimate, able to, you know, have that point-and-click stun, always powerful, and uh, able to enable someone like the Killer Penguin. I'll go back to something we were talking about before, as Roman sort of posturing up here, but he is going to blast Kona away, uh, about a lack of uh, balanced damage profile on the side mm -hmm. of JV1. The Swain, yeah. as you say, does scale up nicely with this uh, Fasting Senna and able to farm. 
But Swain, not a late game damage hyper carry, more of a bruiser uh, type of situation coming in. And so with the rest of the champions on JV1 being fully attack damage based, mm -hmm. I almost would have liked to see Nappy go for a tank plank build here, just so right. you can stack that armor and be totally unkillable in these fights. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, now that I say it out loud, it seems a bit silly to expect Nappy to go for <laughs> tank items. I mean, come on. But you're not saying, this yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're seeing, uh, what's it called? Uh, armor boots, my brain's slipping. Yes, Ninja Tabby. Ninja Tabbies. Uh, on everyone, including Zaya, right? So, yep. like, even there, yep. like, they're just respecting, like, like, hey, if we just build a little bit of armor here, mm -hmm. we'll have It'll enough a lot. to deal with all that. And then maybe eventually, even a GA for double B will be a pretty mm -hmm. good call. Um, and then, you, like, you're just, you'll be unkillable, right? Like, yeah. And unless, uh, yeah, Shoddy comes up there and scales up really nicely. But if you are talking in terms of like the bottling CS, like you are so far behind in that matter, and you're behind in all those kills, like you're about to be Flame Horizon here. Um, yeah. It's it's uh, it's a tough situation right now for, again, I'm not sure how comfortable Shoddy is actually playing this. Again, it took like four or five games at minimum for uh, me and my friend trying out this mm -hmm. kind of bot lane. And it wasn't until like like a few games in, they're like, okay, we kind of get what we're doing now. So uh, unless you practice it, it's not like a free roll. <laughs> yep. it's, a, it's a weird bot lane to play. And uh, again, kind of the same situation last week we had with Oasis Esports where you're like, hey, just don't get kicked by that level one um, <laughs> yeah, thresh exactly. play. It was just kind of the same thing the other round. Like, hey, man, you can almost do the salty run back here and yep. just don't get hurt by that level one. And at least you won't be that far behind on that situation. And uh, uh, it would be better. But it's like, you know, bot lane really all the time is all about understanding when your power spikes are. And they just yep. didn't know when they were early and got punished for it. Yeah, you can't criticize the draft too much here from JV1 as they were able, as we mentioned before, to force that um, Orianna. And now uh, I'm I didn't look at this before because I didn't um, <laughs> I, I didn't look at the masteries properly. So uh, you know, uh, one demerit for me. Tethalus has got spellbook, unsealed spellbook, right? Oh, yeah. And so you can see the heal now. So that cleanse uh, was just taken, I guess, to try to avoid some sort of Pantheon gank. Either that or it was taken even so to bait out the... Um, or, or, or to react to the Swain, which they thought would be right. mid. There's definitely the potential for that. Mm -hmm. And only realized when they got to lane. But of course, there's Tethalus now with the spellbook, uh, able to get a lot more utility going on, and now has that heal available mm -hmm. to get even more teamfight presence here. And uh, that's that's definitely... I, I really like that pickup from Tethalus. So... Soul yeah. point here. Yeah, definitely. Now this dragon going to be a big point of contest for both teams. We'll see what... The King Lan looking to potentially jump onto the Pyro God does. Be able to get them onto there. Now Jarvan's going to be able to follow up there. Pyro God in a bunch of danger. The center also is coming to, to, to temporarily save them. But they're going to go focus back onto the dragon here. It actually went... Oh, dragon, they actually gave up dragon control to try to go for that pick. So the dragon will go to them. They will end up losing. Shoddy in the process. Oh! Nappy, though, going to come in over here, pick up one more kill, and they're going to be jumping on. The Jack 1P is going to try to get away, but he's going to get jumped on by a few more people. Flash is coming through. They're chasing him down. Jack 1P just trying to run away. Trying to get the barrel on top of him. A King's Lance cooldown are eventually come up. Does he use the smite on him to slow him down? Does he actually get out of this situation? Nappy's still trying to run him down. They're going to have to deal with the turret. He will <laughs> flash the ego and get out. So, interesting what just happened there. Uh, them trying to go for that pick cost them the dragon. Yes, so much expended onto that Jax. And it was interesting that <laughs> it looked like some sort of crazy 400 IQ play where they were still able to go back and get more kills. Shoddy sticking around a little bit too long and then also Killer Penguins going down at the end there. So <laughs> this, uh, that was very, very weird situation there. I I'm not exactly sure we, hopefully we get to ask Oasis what exactly was happening in the comms there because yeah, Kingsland just so much expended right onto that Jax there on the side. And it makes sense in theory, if someone's flanking you, you turn around to go for the flanker and then you get that pick off. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes sense. It, it's something that you talk about doing, but if he's able to get away with that Jax getting to ward jump away and then also, mm -hmm. uh, you know, be, being able to stun you up and then get out of the Jarvan ultimate, was it really worth it? I mean, Jax yeah. <laughs> isn't providing that much here. Like you could just go for the 5v5 uh, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, they, they yeah. are going to have to wait one more, five more minutes it's for that uh, other dragon to come mm -hmm. yeah and like uh i'm gonna borrow a magic term here and that's a bit of a punt i won't go as far as saying it's a throw because he's still 
have this game, and to me, throw suggests you threw the entire game, okay. but that's a punt. Like, you a you punt. had the event, and you just punted the ball back to them, and gave them the opportunity to get back into this one. So, right. uh, that's I a, just learned a, a magic term. One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's barred from football, obviously, but yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's it, it definitely, uh, it just sets you back kind of a turn, or like some tempo that you had all yeah. of going into that play, and you, you still have a 5,000 goal, view, but you're still fine overall, but it's like, those are one of those things you kind of review later. Like we could clean this up and just like just finish that game because uh, let's just say you're going up against a, a very very difficult team. Like you you can't give up those kind of advantages too. But yeah. we'll see if JV one's gonna be able to uh, capitalize on that. We are gonna see potentially this fight for this Baron here and now. Teleport available from Pyro God. Yeah, he's definitely gonna be able to come into this fight when they need to. The ultimate's gonna come through from Jack One T. They're jumping into this fight now. Trying to get him into the gate. Watch where the Killer Penguin goes over here in the fight right now. Jack One T is frontlining. He's gonna get taken down by Double T. A bunch of people are gonna get taken out by a lot of AOE damage. Nappy will pick up that kill. So two for zero, three for zero now as a double kill does come through and. Big, gigantic team fight currently going for Oasis Esports as they get that and then will likely get the spare. Yeah, such a nice play there. Actually, it was a really good idea there from JV1. The Pantheon Ultimate perfectly positioned to catch three members of Oasis walking away from the Baron Pit as they tried to get it to reset. The Jax teleport coming in with perfect timing, but Double B has too much damage. You saw so much AoE coming out. Nappy also providing the barrels, so much crowd control. The power of this team composition just outplayed the skill the, the the skilled engage coming in from jv1 so mm. so much damage coming in there from double b you saw a huge zaya ultimate there now eight zero and seven with three items completed plus a zeal double b is just unbeatable right now he's he's he can basically 1v5 at this point <laughs> and, and the kind of crazy things with this with with nappy with Tithalos, with with double b is that they have so much aoe burst damage too is that like you see a bunch of members with like full health, like you see Jake one p jumping in and ulting onto someone, you think, oh, this is a great team fight, and then all of a sudden they're gone. <laughs> uh, all of a sudden, and, and it's like multiple people die at the same time. You see double kills and triple kills coming through all at the same time. Meanwhile, fight is breaking out over here. Seeing line is going to be able to jump away back from that. They're going to continue with the 5 5 push over into the mid lane with the Baron buff, but it's just, it, it is an absurd amount of damage coming through right now for this Oasis Sports Company. Yeah, so just a really nice uh, play there. They did manage to get the Baron as well, so they're going to push up. Uh, a decent wave clear coming in, though, from JV1. They might have to look at some sort of split push, but this turret is very low, so that cannon just uh, just hitting away. And another thing you saw in that fight, and what you saw at the dragon fight as well, was Nappy on the big, bad pirate with Gangplank coming yep. in. You saw him 1v3 going into the back line <laughs> in that previous fight. You saw a whole bunch of damage coming in, and uh, that is why you build Crit Plank uh, in this situation here. He has that Essence Reaver and Trinity Force completed. Uh, will we see an engage now here? Yeah, Jack 1P does ultimate oh, over there. Jumping into the back line is Jack 1P. Is it going to be enough? Then ultimate comes through to try to give him the kill. It will take down at least one member. They're going to go for another one here. They're going to jump in. Tristana does to try to get onto the next person in the line. They will oh. get some down. So Jack 1P will pick up that one. But two more kills goes over to Zyna to try to equal us out. It's now a three for two kind of in favor there. But a big double kill again Nappy's for pushing. Double B. But does go down while Nappy is pushing like you just mentioned. So uh, they're going to try to jump on top of him now, or he'll just be able to get out. So solid fight put together there for JV1 to protect their base. Okay, really good engage there from the Pyro God. Was able to get a three-man stun on the back line mm -hmm. of Oasis Esports, and that enabled them to go in and get those kills. Double B, though, still able to return all that damage. Not only mm -hmm. that, Nappy's pushing in the top lane, and uh, the jungler, Roman, survives, able to get over to the dragon pit to start that dragon, where Nappy can help him clean up and get that mountain soul. So even though it's exactly what the Pyro God should have done, it was the right decision, it's still, uh, Oasis is so far ahead that they're still able to somehow get the advance in that, uh, mm -hmm. in that play. So I like what the Pyro God did. I want to see him keep doing it, but so difficult right now for JV1 to get back in this game, as even if they make the exact right move, uh, they still are getting out rotated and out damaged here. Yeah, and like it's a huge thing right now. And when you're the composition, one of the worst souls to see on the other team is Mountain Soul yeah. because that's just the extra amount of damage you need to do how to, to to get onto someone to start it off. Because you're you're not yep. the you're not the team. Uh, trying to get through this today. Like, like, say it was the other way, OAC Sports, if if JV1 got the Mountain Soul, um, you almost don't care as much because yep. you know you have so much more damage coming through through the rest of the team fight that it, it would be fine. But when you're trying to just blow someone up and get out, it might be enough time to either that person survives or enough time 
for the rest of the team to re-collapse yep. onto you when you try to go for that pick. So it's a it's a tough situation right now for JV1, but they again, like you mentioned, did already put together at least one solid defense here. There's two at opening in hit though, and right now they're pushing on to the bottom one. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, uh, Jack1P feels terrible as Pantheon against that <laughs> Mountain Soul. You're totally reliant on Burst as that champion. Mm -hmm. in the late game trying to burst down those squishies and with mountain soul pantheon is a, an alt and stun bot right now he he does almost no damage to anyone with the, even with the black cleaver and warrior and champion completed now you can see him going for that guardian angel to just give himself a little bit more utility and a little bit of bait potential here's an engage though oh they're trying to fight onto this one this is the pick that they're trying to get here they're gonna jump on top of pyro god he's gonna jump over there he's gonna do the jump out slightly here ultimate though come through they're all trying to use that just to survive everyone's gonna be able to back here double Beast damage is ridiculous. Picks up that kill. They continue this fight onto the Pyro God. He will go down to Roman. They're going to now push into this open inhibitor at mid. Be able to take that down. Probably take out the top one as well. And it was a nice try. Uh, oh, it ends up being yeah. a two for zero for Oasis. <laughs> Kingsland has some kind of grudge going on against uh, the Pyro God here. That's the second time he's chased him halfway across the map oh. away from his team. Here's the engage now, though, on Jack 1P. Yeah, Jack 1P there is trying to tank any of this can. He's going to end up using his stopwatch to survive at least a little bit longer here. Double B, though, is taking a bunch of damage, but oh. will go down. Just give me another shield from the, uh, the lover there in Rakan. And they will finish this up, and Oasis Esports will pick up the game one win over here in this best of three series.